and welcome to lesson number one of this ham radio technician licensing training class. My name is John and I will be your instructor. By the way, Morse code is no longer required to get your amateur radio license. This is an overview of the subjects that we will be addressing. Here is how the course is laid out. This class includes seven lessons. Each lesson lasts about two hours. There is homework. The objective is for you to read the new material ahead of time before I lecture on it, and also for you to learn the exam pool questions and answers. After the seventh lesson, you will need to take the technician written exam. These exams are given by volunteer examiners who generally are hams and members of your local amateur radio club. You will need to contact your local club to get on the schedule to take the technician exam. For this class, you will need a copy of the second edition of the Amateur Radio Relay League ARRL Ham Radio License Manual Level 1 Technician. The license manual covers the information we will be addressing in class. It contains the actual question pool from which the 35 questions of your exam will be randomly selected. It also contains a CD of practice exams. The study guide can be purchased over the web from the ARRL at this address. Or, if you prefer, you can order the study guide over the telephone at the number shown. The current price of the, 30, of the study guide is $29.97 plus shipping. So, let's get started. During emergencies such as tornadoes and earthquakes, telephone, cell phone, and internet services are usually unavailable. In those situations, ham radio is often the only form of communication still working. Hams are very active at providing emergency communications. Hams are also very active at creating new ways to communicate using radio. Besides communicating and serving their communities, hams are very active in lots of different areas, including designing and building equipment, Ham radio is really a lifelong learning hobby. Ham radio is different from citizens' band or different or business radio. Hams have fewer restrictions, more frequencies available to operate, more transmitter power, and lots of different radio modes of operation such as voice, Morse code, computer to computer, and many others. You also have more responsibilities since you have more potential to interfere with your neighbors and with other services. You also can impact international relations since your signal can reach around the world and even into space. There is quite a bit that you can do with a technician license. The technician license is intended to develop your appetite for ham radio so that you will go on to get your general and extra class licenses in order to gain more privileges. Your license is granted by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC. Ham radio is covered under Federal Regulations Part 97. One aspect of ham radio that is very important is that it may not be used for business communications. For instance, if you're operating a pizza delivery service, you may not use ham radio to keep in touch with your drivers. A ham license has no age or citizenship requirements unless you are a representative of a foreign country. The HAM license licenses you to operate and it also licenses your HAM shack. There are three classes of license, technician, general, and extra. The actual question pool is in your study guide. The exam is given by three volunteer examiners known as VEs. 
It is multiple choice and only 35 questions. You must score at least 75%, which is 26 correct, to pass. There is usually a fee to take the exam. At present, the fee is approximately $14. The exam pool contains 396 questions. When you take the exam, remember to read each question carefully. There are 10 elements that will be included on the test. By the way, you're not expected to memorize this list. Your license will be good for 10 years. To do business with the FCC, you must have a social security number or tax ID, a document showing your current mailing address, and a federal registration number, an FRN. You can get the FRN by signing up on the FCC website, which I encourage you to go ahead and do. That web address is shown here. As a licensee, you must prevent unauthorized operation of your ham equipment. You must keep your mailing address current in the FCC database, and you must make your station available in case the FCC wants to inspect it. Notice that this slide has gold lettering at the top. That means that this is a question from the question pool. The question is, for whom is the amateur radio service intended? The answer is D, persons who are interested in radio technique solely with a personal aim and without pecuniary interest. In other words, just for fun and not for business. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of an amateur station? The answer is A, a station in the amateur radio service consisting of the apparatus necessary for carrying on radio communication. The FCC is the governing agency in the United States. As I mentioned before, you must keep your mailing address current in the FCC database, and you must make your station available for inspection. I want to encourage you to register in the FCC system at wireless.fcc.gov slash ULS. You can use that site to access information about your license. What may result when correspondence from the FCC is returned as undeliverable because the grantee failed to provide the correct mailing address? The answer is B, revocation of the station license or suspension of the operator license. When must the station licensee make the station and its records available for FCC inspection? The answer is B, any time upon request by an FCC representative. Sometimes people ask what they can do as a technician class operator. On certain bands, you can operate phone, that is voice or single sideband, data, computer to computer, CW, which is Morse code, radio teletype, and a number of other modes, although you are more restricted than the general or extra class licensees. Here is a listing of some of the bands on which you can operate. Notice the use of band names like 6 meters and frequencies like 50 to 54 megahertz. When we refer to a wavelength, like 6 meters, we are referring to the distance one cycle travels in free space. Put another way, we are measuring the length of a single cycle of a radio wave. 6 meters is about 18 feet. The speed of light is 186,000 miles per second, or 300 million meters per second. 
You convert from frequency in megahertz to wavelength in meters by dividing 300 by the frequency in megahertz. For instance, 300 divided by 146 megahertz gives about 2 meters. 300 divided by 50 megahertz gives about 6 meters. Each of the ham bands has two names, meters and megahertz.